The meniscus is a piece of thin fibrous cartilage that acts as cushioning within the knee to prevent excess contact and allowing for load to transmit evenly across the joint. This structure is often damaged in athletes during twisting motions when the foot is caught on the ground. Complicating the matter is when this structure is damaged alongside the ACL in something called the terrible triad. This is when the ACL, MCL, and medial meniscus are injured in tandem. I've explained in earlier videos how the ACL is able to adapt to loading even after a full tear, showing normalized function in comparison to invasively repaired ACLs. What is the evidence for the same with the meniscus? Can we train function back into the knee even with a meniscus tear? What does the science say? Study number one went into detail between two treatment groups that had meniscus tears. One group received early surgery, while another group received exercise and education. What were the results? 74% of the patients with meniscus tears avoided surgery by just performing 12 weeks of physical therapy. The results were equal to surgery in terms of pain, function, and quality of life at one year follow-up. Now I'm going to show you what they did to get to that point and give my honest critique with specific adaptation to impose demand, that's the said principle, in mind. As a coverall, the meniscus is a structure that's not known to have hypertrophy qualities themselves, but as I touched on before in a prior video, its extra and intracellular environment is shown to protect, support, and augment the meniscus with the main force of compression maximized with full bend. As their exercise protocol flashes across the screen, I want you to think about the structure that's involved. 12 weeks, just two times a week of motions that aren't even forcing the meniscus to be the limiting factor, just 12 weeks time yielded 74% of meniscus tear patients feeling good enough to avoid surgery. This is yet another evidence that movement is medicine. But imagine what could have happened if these patients actually use physics to their advantage, if they actually use movements designed to make the problem structure the limiting factor. I'd imagine that percentage of healing would be much, much greater. And true, we've helped hundreds of people solve meniscus issues without surgery with this specific progression. And the beauty of it is that it all regresses. The easiest being floss band on anti-gravity above and push in reverse below. The important thing with this regression is using anti-gravity and floss bands on the problem leg first to get inputs of pain-free movement at your current level of ability. Over time, removing band, adding back in gravity, and even adding height, load, more range in different directions, and both legs. This is how you turn meniscus therapy into meniscus ability. So this was a study that sought to find the difference in conservative treatment versus meniscus repair. 146 patients were followed over six years. Both groups showed improvements in VAS, which measures pain, IKDC, which measures symptoms, function, and sport, Tegner, which measures level of activity, and Lysholm, which measures pain, instability, locking, swelling, limping, stair climbing, squatting, and the need for support. Comparison between groups also found that osteoarthritis progression, which is bone on bone, is significantly increased in the meniscectomy group. And this makes sense given that this surgery increases joint contact surfaces by 300%. Survival rates were both around 99% at five years and 88% at 10 years. Meaning after five years time, only 1% in each group had invasive treatment like a knee replacement. After 10 years time, the number increases to 12%. Want to know what the treatment group did to get to that point? Six weeks of therapy and ibuprofen. That's all it took to match an operation costing thousands of dollars to equalize in function and decrease bone on bone severity. Imagine the statistics if physical therapy was performed for years. Okay, so what I'm trying to emphasize is this. Your body has much more potential than you might think, even if you had a meniscectomy. We've had members that have had 30% of their meniscus completely removed, thinking they'd never walk or run again, now feeling better than ever. Long-term change doesn't happen with complex drills and ambiguity. The ATG route requires hard work, patience, and consistency like anything else, but it's like a math formula. The greater ability and positions that require the meniscus to be the limiting factor in the movement, the greater possibility for adaptation with 
the goal of moving from rehab to resilience. Okay, study number three. This was a systematic review and meta-analysis of nine good to fair quality studies with low risk of bias. 665 knees comparing arthroscopic meniscus surgery with conservative treatment for degenerative tears and greater than 40 year old knees. They found no difference in improvements in knee pain relief and knee function between the groups. The researchers conclude that surgery should not be considered until conservative treatment has been tried without satisfactory response. This is significant because this is a comprehensive study for older knees showing that rehab is no different than surgery in pain relief and function outcomes. So yes, ATG stands for athletic truth group, but you can be an athlete at your job, being tasked with performing the physical tasks of that job and the same exercises that football players, basketball players, and track athletes are using will yield the same relative benefit for you in your everyday life. Study number four compared surgery and exercise interventions to determine strength and osteoarthritis progression, that is bone on bone, for degenerative meniscus tears. They found that weaker quads increase bone on bone in these patients and that the odds increased by 40% over five years. The application to this study is the ATG approach to training muscle groups. Okay, so it started pouring down rain, so we just switched our venue. With strength curve training for the quads, the reverse step is hardest at the top end of quad extension, the ATG split squat is hardest at the bottom end of quad extension, and the ATG squat is hardest at the mid-range of quad extension. So this progression will effectively build up strength at all possible ranges that the quad can perform, which will be the best possible way to protect against bone on bone, that is osteoarthritis. Study number five sought to determine when exercise could supplant surgery for degenerative meniscus tears. They paired exercise and surgery treatment groups of 140 35 to 60 year old participants with a medial meniscus tear. The exercise group was 12 weeks time, two to three times a week, and the surgery group was a meniscectomy. KOS scores were compared for improvements from baseline at the two year mark. For the natural treatment group, the KOS score was an additional 25 points. For the meniscectomy group, the KOS score was an additional 24 points. In conclusion, both were found to have significant clinical benefit in function. So what ought to be the takeaway, all things considered? The meniscus is a structure in the knee designed to cushion and protect the joint. When damaged, the consensus in the past has been to immediately perform surgery, do a little rehab, and just accept the fact that things won't be the same. I've been there before myself. Um, I tore my meniscus seven years ago during my senior year of high school football. I ended up playing through it. I decided against surgery, bought a pair of copper fit sleeves, and just accepted the fact that I'd have issues for it the rest of my life. Until one day while scrolling through Instagram, I found a guy called Ben Patrick. He had about 20,000 followers at that point. Um, he was talking about a knee ability program that's helped thousands already to that point with impossible knee issues. I decided to give the program a go and within months, the copper fit sleeves were gone, my confidence skyrocketed, and I haven't looked back since. I've since been pursuing my doctorate of physical therapy, and I will graduate this December and will be looking to apply the principle of rehab to resilience that endows this program with all of my clients. So the final takeaway, the meniscus can be rehabbed without surgery, and these studies matching surgery's ability and function and pain, and as shown in anecdotal evidence from ATG, can greatly surpass the effects yielded from surgery.